last night in an old Kansas City train station filled with too much pollen. How many flowers are you going to put in this place? <laughs> an elite group of radio hosts, Syracuse alumni, and cash money millionaires fought and drilled and burned the midnight oil to deliver the most definitive ranking in all of basketball. It's an honor and a privilege. It's time for Nick's Tears. Wild, yes. I gotta say, especially under the circumstances, you are just delivering an all-time performance today. Oh Don't God. blow it the final half hour, but you are really. This might be your flu game. Wow. All right. We now have. We know who's in and out of the play-in playoff officially. We know it. So we have changed the eliminated to just actually eliminated and soon to be eliminated. We don't need any fancy relegated. So let's show that right now. Off the tiers, those 10 teams are officially eliminated. And the Hawks and Bulls, otherwise known as annual play-in participants, <laughs> soon to be eliminated. Now to the actual tiers. Flawed and injured. It, listen, it's not these teams' fault, but they... The Pacers haven't been the same since Tyrese Halliburton got hurt, came yeah. back from the injury, hasn't been quite the same guy. The Cavs obviously haven't been the same since Donovan Mitchell got hurt. He's now back. And the Kings, and again, these teams aren't even flawed to begin with, but the injuries, the Kings, Kevin Herter and Malik Monk, yeah. you're probably fourth and fifth or fifth and sixth most important players just being done. It, 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 nice seasons, but you're cooked. Building block. Knicks, what? Magic, Pelicans. Let me explain it. Okay. I think these are great seasons for all three of these teams. A building block year for all three of these teams. I don't think any of these teams can make round three. The Knicks were the one team that maybe could have, but now Randall's out for the year. Now that Randall's been a great playoff performer, it feels like you can't. But all three of them could win the championship next year. Assuming they get Giannis, which hey, it's on the board. I was about to say, it's on the board. You don't underplay Grimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the board. All right, Bruce is going to like this, or maybe he won't. I'm not sure. Might make me religious. If this That's Heat team goes on a run, I will officially believe in a higher power. Now, that higher power might be whatever Pat Riley prays to. I'll have to find out. But there is no reason to believe in this Heat team. None. And I have been the biggest proponent of Heat culture. I was the one last year. Last year, they've shown no signs of it. Up to and including last night when they're in double overtime against the Hawks. Right. So I, I don't want to write them off entirely, but there's no piece of evidence I can give you. I watched their final possession of against the Hawks last night. Tie game, 17 seconds. Get whatever you want. It was a Tyler Hero one-footed heat because <laughs> they couldn't even get a real shot. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. All right. Crap shoot. No idea what you're getting from these teams. No idea. Now, you can get a hot shooter out there living your best life. You also all of a sudden can go home penniless. At their best, they can look great. Yeah. And we've seen the Warriors at their best recently. We saw the Clippers when they had the great, what was it, six weeks. Yep. But they also can then just be inexplicably beatable by just about anyone. And because of that, can they be consistent in the postseason for two weeks and then three weeks and then four weeks and then six? No, I don't think you can shouldn't be in this position. Mm. Too much talent playing at too high of a level. Obviously, the common thread is the two coaches here, the last two coaches, Rob Blinka picked to coach NBA teams, but <laughs> set that aside, that these two teams are right now a game apart from each other, fighting to stay out of the 9-10 part of the play-in, even though four of your 15 All-NBA team members might be on these two teams. It doesn't make sense but it's where we're at. Next, hard to totally believe, but for different reasons. For the Thunder, it is simply the youth. Yep. For the Timberwolves, it is partially, I guess, my own bias against Gobert's playoff history, but really, what is it going to look like once Towns gets back, and how are they going to assimilate come the postseason? And for the Bucks, it's because the last two months of games have been on television. <laughs> and so because of that, it's hard to totally believe, but they're, they're, you know, all fighting for the one. Well, Milwaukee's fighting for the two or the three. Mm -hmm. They're fighting for the one, two, three. They have good resumes. They have great talent. But it's hard to totally buy in. Can the finals start now? And by that, I mean this. Mm -hmm. I think the Sixers would love to be like, you know what? Can we play Boston right now? Dallas, can we play Denver right now? 
Like, can we just, I don't think either for Philly, Embiid seems healthy yeah. and fresh. For Dallas, they are rolling. Like, I don't know that either of these teams are going to be better in six weeks than they are right now this moment. They certainly, you don't think, would be healthier. And so, these two teams, you could make an argument are the scariest in each conference this very moment if you remove all history from it. And so I'm sure they'd like to get it going immediately. Mr. Consistency, the name says it all, Boston. They've earned the title. For four months, they have just been a machine. They win eight out of 10 games. They have get con contributions from all over. Tatum's great. Jalen Brown is great adjacent. Chris Stapps is playing the best basketball of his career. Drew and Derek White are awesome glue guys. Your guy, J Joe Maz, has even stopped trying to block opponent shots. Wow. They have been consistent, great at home, and they clinched the one seed so long ago, it feels like they don't even, they're like Caleb Williams in the draft. Like, we don't even talk about it because <laughs> it's such a foregone conclusion. Looming over everything. Yeah. The only thing that can stop this team, it would seem, is either Jamal Murray's knee or Michael Porter Jr.'s podcast. Have you guys <laughs> checked that out? My God. What's going on? I don't know what's what going doing, on there, but come on, man. <laughs> you doing? You're in the rotation trying to win your second straight title. But when we're talking about those things, they are the clear-cut favorites. That's this week's edition of the NBA I the crumble cookies were bad. Oh, my <laughs> goodness gracious. Not bad, Nick. Not bad. But I am going to move the Clippers. In fact, I'm going to – the Clippers – should eclipse oh. the Suns. Oh, all right. So like move that. the Clippers move up the to where the Suns switch set. them. Okay. Like In fact, to be honest, I'd move actually the Warriors and the yeah, Clippers up know. ahead of we the know. Suns. But I'm going to focus on the Clippers. First of all, they own the Suns. They're three and zero against them this year mm -hmm. by an average of 16 points a game. All right, and the two biggest wins once they blew them out by almost 30 points. Those two biggest wins came with Durant. Beal and Booker on the court. All right. And I think one of the things they get physical. We know they got the wing defenders to get physical with the Durant, physical with the Devin Booker in there. They got size against Devin Booker. So I think that's a big part of it. But they they also now are starting to play well. They got Westbrook back. Just happens to coincide with their run. They need his energy, man. I, I get it. He didn't fit with the Lakers. But he is great with them, and his willingness to come off the bench, I think, is huge for their morale. So they've won seven of their last eight. And those seven victories have included five over playoff teams, including Denver and, of course, Phoenix and Cleveland. Their depth is great. Uh, I, I, they got good size. Obviously, Ty Lu knows what he's doing. He's a very good coach. Yeah. So I like the Clippers moving up. Uh, the only question mark is this. Kawhi. I mean, well, honestly, I'm starting to win. Say. Right, he's missed five straight yeah. games now. Le At doesn't least look he's like he's playing tonight. He's historically forthcoming about his injury stats. Well, I and mean, that's, that's, see, that's the thing. Yes. Remember when he had the real serious knee injury? They said it was day to day yeah. a couple years ago. So that, that's one so thing that concerns me. The, all right, so you, you, a lot of what you said there, I totally agree with. But the Kawhi thing looms over all of it because we, I don't feel like I have any grasp on. How significant this – is this right now they're just being cautious, we're going to be the 4-5 no matter what, who – you know, and it'd be right. super – or is this something that is going to potentially, unfortunately, rear its ugly head the way it has for postseason in the past? Great take on Ty Lue, by the way. I wonder – do you think he ever was interested in coaching the Lakers? I wonder how that would have worked You're out. really upset about – I, I don't think the Lakers are run well. I don't think the Lakers are run well. No, I don't. Goodness. It's, you know, it's Paul depriving Paul. us of a chance to see – He's just a humble agent. He's not running the basketball team. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm nothing if not fair. Everybody knows that. And that's what do they call you? Wilds? They call me the mayor of fair. Yeah. Yes. So that's even right. though I believe in Denver, I've got to say the Wolves need a little more respect. Ah. We're go they're going into Denver, two and one against the Nuggets. Yep. They could be three and one. And everybody, when you're talking about the Suns, or you're talking about the Warriors, or you're talking about the Lakers. One of the arguments is why they're jammed in, you know, 8, 9, 10. What are you going to do? The West is so tough. Oh, my goodness, the gauntlet. And if I'm the Wolves, I'm like, yeah, we know. And we're in first place. Can we get some credit? And the largely, well largely the answer from the media is no, actually, we can't. <laughs> but then when Cat went down, the media was like, yes, now we're going to see the Wolves. And Anthony Edwards said, actually, no, I will carry this team since Cat went down. Record tied for fourth. And, uh, point differential up. 
Defensive rating, still good. As Brew will tell you, he's been grinding the all 10. The defensive yep. plus minus for yep. Anthony Edwards is something. <laughs> <laughs> what is it for exactly? I don't necessarily buy that. I think you need defensive was. win share. Defensive win share. I think share. defensive rating and win share. Yeah, yeah, that's it was right. a double, yeah. it's a, double a, dose. It's kind of it's like a Rudy. Yeah, uh, Jason. It's like he's subscribed to Sports Illustrated. The casuals the say that. Sneaker phone. Yeah, yeah. We sold a lot of sneaker phones. Like, yeah. When you were looking at that, who was number one in the whole league in both those stats? Well, Gobert. Okay, but but right. still, I mean. <laughs> Still, either way. Uh -huh. Just they, watch Ant. Yeah. As Nick likes to say, the games six. are on TV. Yeah, yeah. I know. Ant gets out. No, I like. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not and up. you know what, Nick? And you, I think you. I think in the playoffs, late because I like the T Wolves like you. I don't late really in like games, them. I think they could go Nas and Cat late, so you don't you don't deal with Rudy. You know what I mean? Oh, and anytime, being vulnerable anytime in the pick and roll. Your solution is to put no, the but, highest but, but, guy on your team but on the field. You know what I mean? No. Like Nas Reed is playing great. Nas Reed is playing I think, great. 19 points. The Cavs going to play a game. Go. Also, that's the news that you played, wanted. Is it three? They, I think he, they say they could play at least one. one. Okay. And they've got the Hawks or the Suns. As we so say. I'm just so I think that was all a good take. Your feeling on the Timberwolves. Your feeling, not what I should do. or Whatever is what? Well, look, they can't beat Denver, but. As the mayor affair, if they're three and one against Denver, it's a hard argument to make. So if the if the Timberwolves win tonight and it, or be, go three and one against Denver and you know go a long way to securing the one seed to where Denver won't have that devastating home court advantage, you will come in tomorrow and feel how about the Western Conference Finals? Ninety nine percent confident. Oh, that's oh, from ninety nine I mean, from hundred the game. That, that, that we well, keep oh, four for okay. a reason. Okay, yeah. that, okay. you know, Wilds. So I use the Wilds. I use it. Denver beats the Lakers. I can't say the Lakers will beat yeah, Denver. Okay. No, that's okay. that, that's that's why you're the mayor of Fair. I know it's and hard. That's why you're not Mister Consistent. <laughs> <What the heck>? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we updated a horrible graph. No, we didn't. Jason. These guys just didn't graphic. understand it. Went over it's their heads. horrible. So I'll explain it better. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.